Thanks for joining us for Together. I'm Karen Lee. For the next 30 minutes, we'll hopefully tug at your hearts and fill you with hope as we share some amazing stories of people who are coming together for Colorado. And today's show includes people of all ages, both young and old, who are working together to make our community stronger. I love sharing these Together for Colorado stories with you, and I hope that you enjoy them as much as I do. This show is for the entire family, so sit back and enjoy. Getting diagnosed with diabetes can be tough, especially as a kiddo. But there's a local Girl Scout coming together for Colorado to make things a little easier. It's personal for her. Jeff Todd shows us how she's helping young patients. Michaela Kynard has been busy. This is for girls ages three to five. She created these gifts for kids who have just been diagnosed with diabetes. Did you make these? Yeah. Oh my God. That's great. They may not seem like much, but they're making a big difference in these kids' lives. Even though they're going through this hard time, it's not going to be as difficult as they think it is. Why this cause is so personal for Michaela. That's next on Together. Well, Colorado just wouldn't be the same without all the beautiful trails. And thanks to some Air Force Academy cadets, one trail will be used for years to come. Matt Kroschel shows us how they're working together to get more people outside. It started as a school project. The cadets had to design a bridge for a popular trail. I wanted to get involved in that and, you know, give back to the community a little bit. And now they're getting the chance to install it. That's the treat is to be being able to work hands on. The big difference this bridge will make. That's later on Together. Well, living out here in the West just wouldn't be the same without the rodeo. It's a tra tradition that every kid should get to experience. Well, luckily, there is a group of volunteers making sure that kids with special needs get to take part, too. Kelly Worthman takes us to the special rodeo. Look at him go. Look it's an event that's been going on for more than 30 years. We've got some steer wrestling, we've got some roping. And it's still just as much fun as the day it started. When you rope, you hold the rope back here. The dozens of volunteers who made this special rodeo a reality. We want to make sure that everybody uh, has, a, has a part in this. That's coming up on Together. Well, first responders save lives daily, but have you ever had the chance to thank them in person? Well, some seniors in Westminster wanted to show their gratitude. As Joe Hillen and photojournalist Bill Mashur show us, they did it with an ice cream social. Chocolate and vanilla with some chocolates are pretty straightforward. Sometimes thank yous are best served up in scoops with sprinkles. I love them all, and I just told him I hope he never knocks on my door. Georgia Atkinson has been a resident at Covenant Village of Colorado and Westminster for 13 years. Well, I know they're already really like us. They're used to coming over here. So I think there's like almost like coming and taking care of family, I would think, after all these years. The ice cream social is a way for residents to show appreciation to first responders and have a chance to talk in a non-emergency setting. My second helping. Don't tell my guys, though. They'll make me work out again. Samuel Pendleton is station captain for Station 3. He says the residents have always shown a spirit of gratitude. Whether we're going through the lobby with our gear to go help somebody or leaving, they're always saying thankful, thank you to us. And whether they're here for a get-together or an emergency, Samuel says he enjoys the chance to rub shoulders with the residents. It's, it's great to be here with them and have a, a, a different generation kind of shine light into our world. It's awesome. The hope is opportunities like this are not just a way to say thank you, but a chance to come together and make this community a great place to live. In Westminster, Joel Hillen, covering Colorado First. And it's always better with sprinkles. Joel, thank you. Well, a professor at CU Boulder is coming together for Colorado's young girls. Casey Fessler is doing it by helping improve Barbie's image. She's working with Mattel to develop a robotics engineer Barbie. Now, the goal, of course, to get young women interested in careers in engineering and technology. I definitely had a lot of Barbies. Um, but there were definitely not any computer engineer Barbies or anything like that. I mean, I think I remember it being kind of exciting when I had a doctor Barbie. We have this pipeline problem for girls in STEM. As they get older, they start to think, oh, these things are for boys. And so anything that we can do to combat that stereotype is really helpful. 
Just love it. Fessler is also going to share some tips on what should be included in the ebook by Mattel that explains that career. You're going to find that with a doll once it's on the market. Well, local Girl Scout is coming together for Colorado Kids. She's helping young patients who have just found out that they have diabetes. It's a cause that hits home for Michaela. She lost someone she loved to the disease. Jeff Todd and photojournalist Jeremiah Belial share her story. Here you go. Michaela Kynard has been working for years on this delivery. Thank you. Today, she dropped off 60 special bags for boys and girls of all ages. So this is for girls ages three to five. Crayons for the coloring book. A gift for a kid she doesn't even know. They'll get these bags after they find out they're diagnosed with diabetes. We figured that this bag could be put to use multiple ways. A mixture of fun and practical necessities. Coloring books and band-aids, toys and alcohol swaps. Did you make Cotton these? Swaps? Yeah. Oh my God. Great. And I also made 60 paracord bracelets. So buckle it and they can put their medical ID on it. Five years ago, Michaela's aunt died from complications of diabetes. She was only 26 years old. Now, Michaela is doing everything she can to help others. So since my aunt was diabetic, I kind of saw the things that she used. Well, they will love that. Michaela worked with the staff at the Barbara Davis Center for Childhood Diabetes to make the packs just right. She hopes it'll bring joy to patients. Well, I think knowing that someone cared enough to spend the time and effort to collect that and put these bags together, I think that means a great deal to children and families. And I really appreciate very much all the effort that's gone into that. Well, Michaela, clearly an incredible young woman. We love seeing these young people that are just doing more for everyone around them. Jeff Todd got the chance to meet with her and share her story with all of us. And let's talk a bit more about Michaela. How did she come up with this idea? It really goes back to the relationship that she had with her Aunt Elizabeth who, and was really affected by her death. Her mom told me that she really felt like she was losing her best friend. Uh, a big part of this is that Elizabeth got a lot of treatment at the Barbara Davis Center for Childhood mm -hmm. Diabetes, which is on the CU Anschutz campus, a world-renowned facility that we have right here in Colorado. Yeah. And so the idea came about after Elizabeth's path, passing that Michaela wanted to do something. And so she started to work with the center to really find out what she could do, especially for these young kids who were diagnosed with diabetes, put together packages. And so she really fine-tuned what she wanted to put in those bags with the folks from the Barbara Davis Center. And now she's taking this a step farther. Now she wants to help even more people. She doesn't want to stop here. Yes, yeah, she really worked hard to put together a nonprofit. This is part of it, and she also did it for her Girl Scout Silver Award. But really, they've got these virtual 5Ks going on. They're trying to raise more money for this nonprofit so that they can really help families that are dealing with someone who's recently diagnosed yeah. with diabetes, help them, you know, in any way that they can. Yeah, it just makes you feel so good. Warms your heart to know that there's someone out there that's, uh, you know, someone so young. Someone so it, young, right? yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. Let's find out about her nonprofit. How do we find out about it? We've got all the information on cbsdenver.com. It's called One Monkey's Miracle. They've got a Facebook page. They've got a website. That's where they're taking donations or people can mm -hmm. sign up for the 5K. Um, but, you know, Karen, another thing that was really amazing as we were along this ride and watching these bags get delivered is that the doctors and the nurses were so impacted by this. Mm -hmm. We know that these bags will be helpful for families when their kids are diagnosed and when they're given these bags. But it was really remarkable to see the people at the Barbara Davis Center think that this was such a great and amazing thing as well. And like you said, coming from a kid that's so young. Yeah, they get it, right? Yeah. Oh, thanks so much, Jeff. We Thank look you. forward to seeing what she continues to do. Yeah. Well, Coloradans, of course, love the environment, so it's no surprise to hear at least one town is making huge strides towards sustainability. Now they're getting recognized for it. How people come together to make going green a priority. Well, we are months away from ski season, but a Colorado resort is getting recognized for coming together for the environment. Vail was just certified as the first sustainable mountain resort in the world. And it's not just the resort that is going green. Vail has hybrid buses, electric vehicle charging stations, and a really good recycling program. Getting this award is an effort the entire town has been a part of. It really, really takes everybody coming together and 
that's been the greatest piece of the whole um, process has really been partnering with the others, the town, the ski company, the businesses, other nonprofits. Vail Town Councilors say the certification means more than just getting recognized. They also say it'll help tourism as more people are choosing sustainable hotels and communities that make an effort to go green. It's a little hard to start thinking about skiing right now. We know we'll start getting some of those pictures in, in no time. Oh, but yeah. uh, You can Dave, go up there during the summer, yeah, though. Yeah, right? for sure. Yeah. So beautiful. Do some hikes and enjoy all the nice weather up there. Mm -hmm. Dave Aguilar with us to talk about all those great photos you've been sending us. Howdy, howdy. Yeah, uh, I have one up in the mountains. We're going to take you right up to a big hiking trail oh. to check out this one. This is from Robin Clutters and Lindsay Unhock. They're hiking to Conundrum Hot Springs. Now, that's up near Aspen. And you get to see a waterfall on the way. And it, usually if you hike that, it takes about a full day to go mm -hmm. up and come back. And there's a little hot spring that fits about 15 oh, people in it. Look at end. those backpacks. Those I are know. some Isn't that cool? good hiking girls. And Robin is the producer of Together. Mm -hmm. And Lindsay is our newsroom administrator mm -hmm. here at Channel 4 as well. And look at all the gear they have. I know. They're, they're well prepared. They, Smart girls. They know what to do for sure. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And here's a couple on horseback. Rich and Pam Potts uh, on the Capitol Peak Trail up near Snowmass. Look at that beautiful, and you can oh, barely make that, out yeah. the peaks way in the back out there, but that's a nice ride up there, too. And is that still a little snow up there, too? Is yeah, that it looks like, yeah. yeah that's little, impressive. A little bit of snow way up beautiful. high. Thank you guys for sending that in. And Joy Jordan, she is one of our weather watchers mm -hmm. who lives out near Bennett, and it looks like she's holding something there. Now watch when I take the little banner away. She had the other day, she had about uh, pea to marble to even quarter size hail. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's had a couple of big storms out where she lives. And yeah. today, it's been a stormy or, week. Or the, over the course of the weekend, they yeah. might uh, pick up some more. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right. Well, thanks so much for sharing all those photos with, with us. We sure love them. So keep them coming. We love to see all of your pictures. We want to see you out enjoying Colorado with your family. So send us an email at togetherforcolorado at cbs.com. You can also post it on social media using the hashtag tag for Colorado, and we will be sure to share right here on this show. Well, Air Force Academy cadets are taking their skills outside the classroom. Instead of working on planes, they are working on one of Colorado's trails. How their hard work will not only help the hikers, but be around for decades. That's next on Together. Coming up this week in our Together for Colorado calendar, on Tuesday, it is the National Night Out. The annual event brings the local police departments together with their local community members. On Thursday, it's Save the Ales at Mile High Station. The eco-friendly event raises money for water conservation in Colorado. Then come Saturday, support schools in the St. Vrain Valley by taking part in the Sunrise Stampede. The community event has been going on for 33 years. For more information on these events, just visit the Together for Colorado section of CBSDenver.com. Coming together for Colorado to enjoy the great outdoors. Air Force Academy cadets are teaming up with the Forest Service to encourage more people to get outdoors. The cadets spent a day in Breckeridge installing a new bridge across the popular McCullough Gulch Trail. Matt Kroschel and photojournalist John Mason introduce us to the hardworking crew. From the design in the classroom, yeah, we went here about a year ago to check out the site. To the bridge taking shape over the creek now. That's the treat, is to be being able to work hands-on. Air Force Academy cadets joining forces with the Forest Service to help make Colorado better. Really, like, assemble something that you worked on throughout the year, so uh, it's really special and, and an opportunity not a lot of people get to have. It. Their project is a year in the making. I wanted to get involved in that and, you know, give back to the community a little bit. For Cadet Ryan Howe, it's a way to give back to his community. A lot of it is just, you know, creating a dialogue between the Air Force Academy, the Forest Service, and the people that are using the trail. The forest is seeing more visitation than ever has before. This trail is the third most popular on the whole Dillon Ranger District. And this is one of those projects that frankly wouldn't get done for a long, long time were it not for a partnership like this. It all started decades ago when this professor had another bright young student. He happens to work at the White River National Forest. They dreamed this class up. And for us to be able to get back together after we graduated in 1988, it's pretty amazing to come back together and then these cadets get the fruit or the benefit of that relationship. The collaboration happening here shows us the bridge being built will connect two sides and it will connect these cadets to the people who benefit from the efforts 
for years to come. Because at the end of the day, that's what, that's what we're doing it for. Well, it took about a week for those cadets to finish the bridge, and they are already coming up with plans to build another one on a different trail, thanks to them for all their amazing hard work. Well, coming together for Colorado soldiers, local police departments are making sure they are not forgotten. We're going to take you to just one of the powerful tributes for our servicemen and women. Catch the latest episodes of Together, as well as your favorite Together for Colorado stories, anytime at cbsdenver.com. Well, amazing things are happening all over Colorado. And today we want to recognize some of the wonderful things that are also happening just over the border in Wyoming. That's where a group of volunteers has spent the past 30 years making sure that every kid, no matter their ability, gets to experience the fun of the rodeo. Kelly Worthman and photojournalist Dale Atchison take us to this special rodeo. Look at him go, look at him ride. Cheyenne Frontier Days is known for the rodeo, and this event is giving kids Watch them horns now. the ride of their young lives. We want to make sure that everybody uh, has, a, has a part in this. It all started back in 1987. Rodeo coordinators wanted to give kids with special needs a special hands-on experience at the daddy of them all, so they created the Challenge Rodeo. So we've got some steer wrestling, we've got some roping, we've got a uh, some bull riding, we've got, uh, they're going to ride some real horses, we've got stick horse uh, barrel racing. In the heart of the big arena, it's just like the real thing, only with smaller horses and bigger smiles. We've received letters and phone calls from kids from, you know, years and years ago about what this event meant to them um, and how great it was to be a part of it. More than 30 years later, oh, when you rope, you hold the rope back here. Hundreds of volunteers of all ages are teaching these kids how to rope and ride. See what you had to do to stay on. Hold on. You had to hold on. Was it hard? No. This special rodeo has cowboys and cowgirls smiling ear to ear, and it's just as fun for the volunteers, and at times a bit emotional. Because you get a little teary-eyed. It's. Uh, you know, this is really the highlight for a lot of kids for their, their entire years. All the more reason why these volunteers want to make sure these pint-sized bull riders have barrels of fun. Yes. That's just beautiful. Well, our police officers come together for Colorado, we know, every day, not only by doing their job, but also by going above and beyond the call of duty. Just take a look at what Lone Tree police officers did to pay their respects to a fallen soldier. They lined up along the Lincoln Avenue Bridge over I-25 to salute the motorcade, carrying Staff Sergeant Scott Hebert. The Colorado Springs man was killed while serving. The Lone Tree Police Department wanted to share their thoughts and their prayers with that family. Well, thanks so much for joining us on Together. We'll look forward to seeing you next week as we have more powerful stories of how people are coming together for Colorado. Until then, we leave you with the peaceful sights and sounds of Estes Park, as showcased by our own Sean Chitness. So enjoy.